I see a very strange phenomenon in the lives of so many believers. In fact, too many believers. And unfortunately, I have to admit, I see it in myself as well. And that makes me say, yuck. My observation is simply this. We have a great danger that when we gain a little knowledge of God, that we are likely to acquire right along with it a varying dose of pride at the knowledge that we have acquired. You can see how that would happen, couldn't you? After all, we are now in the know, which means there are a lot of other people out there that are not in the know like we are. Paul warned us about this in the Corinthian letters when he said, knowledge puffs up. But let's walk in balance here. We need to remember from the Old Testament, there was a great verse out of Hosea chapter four that said this, without knowledge, my people are destroyed. So we need knowledge. We need to come to know the truth, as Jesus said, so that we can walk in freedom. But we need to beware of knowledge, lest knowledge become an end in itself and we become arrogant. One of the ways that we can gain help in this battle is to embrace what I would call true knowledge. True knowledge includes the knowledge that God and the things of God are way too big for us to ever fully comprehend. Think about it. He is eternal. He is infinite. We are finite, which means, my friends, there's no way for the finite to ever fully exhaust the infinite. In other words, even though we've come to know God and experience God, there's always more of God to come to know and experience. I believe with all my heart that even in eternity, we will spend eternity learning about God. The only way we could ever fully understand God is if we were God, and that's the one part we know is never going to happen. And so as we've said before, the real problem for us really is a vision problem. Our God is way too small and our view of ourselves is way too big. If we can correct that faulty vision and have our eyes opened to and maintain a true image of how great God is and how small we are in comparison to him, then we gain the true knowledge of God which will lead us to walk in humility instead of that ugly pride that has no basis for being on us in the first place. I think of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, where Paul asked this question, what do you have that you did not receive? The implication, of course, of that is you don't have anything that you didn't receive. Paul then asked this necessitated question, how about necessitated? <laughs> then why do you glory as if you didn't receive it? My friends, John the Baptist said it so well, and his words are good marching orders for all of us as we walk through our journey on this planet. He, the Lord Jesus, is the one who must increase. We are the ones who must decrease. Bless you and know that you're loved.